Welcome back to this video about Joseph of Arimathea. I hope you've enjoyed it so far. It's been at least a little bit enlightening. Um, but back to Joseph, uh, anyhow. A further point is that he, it is incredibly unlikely that he would have had a family tomb that was empty and ready to use, just waiting there in the eventuality that, uh, that someone needed to be buried in it. Um, furthermore, if he was such a prominent member of the Sanhedrin as is claimed in the Gospels, why is he never heard of again? His name, if it was fictional, uh, if Mark, for example, had made um, Joseph of Arimathea up as a fictional character, would have been impossible to verify anyway, uh, since there were some 70 people in the Sanhedrin at any one time, and Jerusalem was sacked uh, in the meantime, conveniently destroying all such records, meaning that he could have made this person up and known full well that it would have been unverifiable that he was made up. Richard Carrier notes that it would have uh, also been unlikely that a man from Arimathea, if, he, if it existed, would be on the Jerusalem Sanhedrin. Although I've not seen the evidence that he uses for this assumption, um, it could well be a very good point to add to the argument. Now onto the actual tomb that Jesus was buried in. Now some commentators and archaeologists have noted that uh, the tomb itself is, is rather a dodgy concept in as much as uh, it's thought that uh, they only started using round stones on tombs in around 70 CE, uh, some 40 years after Jesus' death. So when the accounts of his burial have him buried in a tomb with a round stone, it is anachronistic. It simply wouldn't have happened at the time that Jesus was buried. Now, although this doesn't affect uh, Joseph directly, obviously the whole historicity of the, the burial comes under some kind of scrutiny when you see that something as simple as a tombstone was uh, incorrect. Next, and crucially, the word prominent to describe Joseph in Mark is a word that can also mean rich or wealthy. It actually makes more sense to use it thus. This is because Joseph suddenly makes sense in a fulfilment of prophecy mechanism. Isaiah 53, which is arguably a key messianic prophecy, says this. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. This seems entirely dubious, that there is suddenly a, this rich man burying Jesus, which so conveniently fits into this contentious messianic prophecy. If you then argue that God has ensured that this prophecy was fulfilled, then you have to answer why God has ensured this, and not ensured that malaria, for example, never existed, killing the billions of people that it has. Simply put, it seems entirely retrojected and casts more doubt upon Joseph's existence. Finally, another point to invalidate claims that Joseph was a real historical figure is that he disappears off the radar immediately after his burial antics. Joseph is exactly the sort of person that the Christians would want to head up their early church. Rich, powerful, lots of contacts, a secret disciple, a good man. If he is all these things, then, well, he couldn't have been. If he was so good, he would have been a prominent early Christian. Instead, nothing is heard of him until he pops up in much later spurious writing with no historical evidence, the sort of legends that came later. He is a man who would have been an excellent source for information from the, from the gospel writers. However, none of the authors list him as a source. In fact, they're all very bad at historians, even Luke, as they fail to list any sources whatsoever or carry out proper historical methodology, such as we have seen from Suetonius or Pliny, for example. So Joseph disappears off the map when really he should have been a central figure in the early church. Yet he wasn't. Why is this? Is it because he doesn't exist? Seems fairly likely to me. Dennis MacDonald has noted how similar the Gospel of Mark is to the Greek epics of the Iliad and the Odyssey by Homer. 
Um, as Richard Carrier says, MacDonald finds more than 11 parallels between the Gospel of Mark, Mark's account of the crucifixion and the death of Hector, all but one of those in the same order, and that one exception is in inverted order, and 11 more parallels between Mark's account of the burial of Jesus and Homer's account of the burial of Hector, all in the same order. Likewise, his theory puts a serious damper on the historicity of Joseph of Arimathea and the burial account in Mark. Joseph is a type of Priam who rescued the body of Hector for burial in a similar way. Although this might seem like uh, stretching um, believability, I think that coincidences like this are almost too much to to ignore when you've got 22 similarities just between the burial and um, the crucifixion narratives then you've got to say hang on here maybe Mark is actually using Homer as a scaffold for producing his own narrative and uh, how contrived is the Gospel of Mark, Mark when it comes to recording these events I think that uh, the gospel writers were, and particularly Mark, um, very liter literarily aware. They, they knew their literature and they used it to their advantage. And this is just another example of how um, they have done this. So to conclude, I cannot see under the weight of all these incredibly unlikely scenarios and all the evidences that Joseph of Arimathea is anything more than a literary mechanism to achieve a fulfilled prophecy and a reversal of expectation. If he had existed, then why have we heard nothing about him in early Christian writings? And the coincidence of his name, Joseph, to Jesus' father, the lack of any evidence anywhere about the city of Arimathea, and the staggering coincidence that Arimathea seems to mean best disciple town, together with the parallels uh, to Priam in Homer's epics, and indeed that the crucifixion and burial narratives so closely resemble the Homeric epics, mean that I find it virtually impossible to conclude that Joseph of Arimathea is anything other than a fictional character in Mark that the later Gospels and Christians drew on and draw on as fact. Joseph of Arimathea simply didn't exist as a real person. Arimathea most probably didn't exist as a real place. That's the evidence. I hope you've enjoyed the video that I've done for you here. Any feedback would be greatly appreciated. Yeah.